going to talk about image alignment using nonlinear least squares. So we have already seen the 2D rigid transform consisting of a rotation and translation. This had a uh, rotational um, of theta and a translation of tx, ty. Writing it out in equation form, I have two equations relating the coordinates in the A image xy to the coordinates in the B image. And as we saw, we can put this into a system of linear equations if we treat the cosine as, and sine as independent variables. So linear least squares, then, we can solve using uh, the pseudo-inverse uh, shown here. And that gives us the solution for our unknown parameters x. And in MATLAB, that is the PINV command. So we saw this example of uh, trying to find a rigid transformation to transform the book in this image to the book in this image. And here are four corresponding points. Each column here represents an XY, which is a corner of the book. So the upper left-hand corner in this image is 213.29. And that corresponds to the upper left corner in this image, which is 207 and 7. This uh, loop fills the array um, A. Uh, each point generates two rows of that matrix. Um, this is the x coordinate, the minus y, a 1, and a 0. The y coordinate, the x coordinate, a 0, and a 1. And this uh, puts the point, the B points, into a one-dimensional vector. So we solve for that using pseudo-inverse, pseudo and then we can extract the parameters that we're looking for from x. OK, so to tr do this problem using nonlinear system, we want to solve for theta directly and not treating sine and cosine as independent variables. So we really just want to find three variables instead of four. But this is a system of nonlinear equations because cosine and sine, of course, are nonlinear functions. But we can still solve for these unknowns using least squares, but we have it will require an iterative algorithm that I'll show next. So Newton's method is the what we'll use. And I'll show for a scalar function how this works. So if I have a function, uh, a known function, y uh, equal f of x, and um, I want to find, I, I have a known value for y, call it y1. So here's x, here's y, here's my function f of x. So let's say I want to solve, I want to find the value of x, call it x1, at y1. So I have a starting guess for um, x, I'll call it x0, let's say it's over here, and that should be close to um, my final answer, x1. So I take the total derivative of my function, which would be dy equals df dx times dx. So um, I know what y0 um, is. That's the value of the function at x0. So the error between um, my current estimate and my desired result is y1 minus y0. So this is my, my error or residual. So I want to find the um, correction to x, call it delta x, such that it will bring my estimate closer to the final answer. So I solve for delta x. It's going to be delta y over df dx. And then I let um, x go to x plus delta x and repeat. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're assuming that 
the function is locally linear. Let me put it in green here. So in the vicinity of my solution, um, I know the error between my current value of y, which is y0, and my desired value y1. I know the slope, and therefore I can solve for the correction delta x. And it might take a, a few iterations to get there. So in uh, in a vector, we have a uh, vector function f of x and vectors y and x. And similarly, we start with a guess for x called x0. We take derivatives of f, but since these are vectors, we now have a, a, matrix, a matrix of derivatives for each of the components of f against each of the elements of x. So this matrix of partial derivatives is called the Jacobian matrix. So the uh, algorithm that we're going to use is similar to Newton's method. We start with a guess for x0, x called x0. We have our function that we know. We have our measurements uh, y0. So we initialize x to x0. We compute uh, the value of y at our guess. We get the residual error. We compute the Jacobian evaluated at that point. And now I have this linear equation for uh, dy related to dx. Solve for dx and add dx to the current estimate for x to get our new estimate. And then we just repeat that until it converges.